Hello everyone. Welcome to Ka Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono Webinar. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. So nice to see many of you from different countries and different time zones. Before we start our webinar, we always thank the universe for giving us this great opportunity. Dr. Sweta Singh, our car chief administrator, will start the session. Hello everyone, uh, myself Dr. Shweta Singh, the Chief Administrator. Welcome our respected speakers, Chairman and CEO, Kavita Ma'am, CA volunteers and all the attendees to CA webinar. I would like to take the opportunity to introduce CA Humipati Study Group to all of you. CA Humipati Study Group Pro Bono was organized and founded by a homeopath and humanitarian, Dr. Kavita Kukunur, President and CEO of Kavita Holistic Approach, CA. This study group is intended to be an offering from Kavita to the homeopaths around the globe, sharing goodwill and solid clinical work within the classical model are foundational principles for the CA. CA mission and vision are very unique to inspire young homeopaths, mentor, provide excellency for educational purposes using holistic approaches via webinars which are based on principles of classical homeopathy and provide professional continuing educational homeopathy credits for practitioners. We provide merit certificates for spreading the light of homeopathy around the globe. Dr. Kavita is a mentor or member of Kevin Frowndy Foundation, a non-profit organization that helps to serve poor people in greater needs in India. She is nationally board certified by Council for Homeopathic Certification CHC and Achena CPD provider and serves as the associate editor for the homeopathic heritage. She is the recipient of Martha Allman Community Service Award by National Center for Homeopathy and Best Entrepreneur Award from Dr. N. Linga Raju, principal of JSVS Homeopathic Medical College, Hyderabad, India. Tana, Telugu Association of North America, a prestigious organization honored and awarded her for selfless homeopathic and humanitarian services at Ladies' Night Out on October 2022, Michigan. Also, Dr. Kavita received the prestigious legendary homeopathic homeopath award with joint hands of Honorable Health Minister Dr. Dhan Singh Rawat, Senior MLA Mr. Harbhajan Singh Chima, Ex-Director Homeopathy, Government of Uttarakhand and Chairman of Homeo Cure and Research Institute during the National Homeopathic Seminar, Homeopathy the Future Medicine at Kashipur on 21st August 2022. Dr. Deepak Sharma, Ka Mentor, Dr. Rajinish Kumar Sharma, Ka Advisor and myself, Ka Chief Administrator, Ka Team were also recognized and presented with Legendary Homeopath Award at the ceremony. We are proud to announce that Dr. Kavita was honored as the Woman of the Year 2023 from prestigious organization NATA, North American Telugu Association, USA. Dr. Kavita was also honored by renowned DTA, Detroit Telugu Association Executive Committee on Mother's Day at Michigan, USA with DTA Community Service Award 2023. We are extremely happy and proud that we celebrated 12 years of her book, Beyond the Limits, A Challenge to Prove Oneself. And we are delighted and proud to announce that her second book, 
a dose of spirituality with kavita has completed its two years today and we are celebrating its second anniversary the ebook was launched last year in presence of honorable guest of speakers american institute of homeopathy aih president dr alex becker and council for homeopathy chc president dr sheetal tiwari at our ka webinar our speaker today at ka second annual celebration our honorable guest of speaker dr jawahar shah chairman of enlightenment education launched its audio version and hard copy we have don donated over 1500 dollar to 10 to 15 charities which we have also listed on the website dr kavita donated the proceedings of the book through ka study group platform to various charitable organizations and homeopathic associations to name a few are kevin friendly foundation chc dhma gsps college vt seva and ch etc interested one can reach us for details at ka study group at gmail.com purchase link will be also be shared as of now we have over 350 plus recordings on professional webinars related to homeopathy health related topics and inspirational talks available on our youtube channel with the name kavita kukunur this study this webinar is moderated by ka family myself and dr shravna it is be, being recorded as we speak we will take questions at the end of the webinar we also post jot form in zoom webinar chat at the end of the webinar so please fill the form to receive your certificate if kindly mute yourself and turn your video off for better connections thank you over to dr kavita thank you so much dr sweta she manages all our ka activities with cute smile and we have dr shravana shravana would you like to do ethics now or at the end i can go now ma'am Hello everyone. This is Dr. Shauna, and I'm a CA volunteer. Uh, so now I'm going to go about the uh, CA homeopathy study group pro bono ethics and benefits. Uh, to be a CA speaker, it needs at least one or two months to be active volunteering. Only CA speakers themes are promoted in newsletters and webinars. CA group provides volunteering for two to twelve months, respects and inspires volunteers to grow. Active volunteers will be promoted through our website, social media, and added to WhatsApp group. Articles of volunteers will be posted on CA website and newsletter, and will be sent for publication at other journals too. Volunteers and speakers are eligible for prestigious CA annual awards. Volunteers are eligible for CA inspirational talks. Volunteers are eligible for case discussions. ka study group promotes homeopathic organizations as well as their mega events ka promotes great work of speakers through their book reviews honorable guests may propose their future courses or events after the webinar ka maintains a healthy and happy environment so keeps only like minded folks ka requires everyone to maintain the confidentiality of the group thank you everyone Thank you so much, Dr. Shravana, and I thank Ka Homeopathy Study Group and Tag Team for their continuous selfless support, with which we are able to make our pro bono activities and webinars so beautiful. These webinars are for educational purposes only and should not misuse any of the course content without speaker's permission. Always seek an expert homeopath for treatment. and as dr sweta singh has said uh, that we have celebrated um, we are celebrating today our second book anniversary so many congratulations to ka homeopathy study group entire team and all the book proceeds were donated to several charities and once again thank each and every one and special thanks to kevin friendly foundation chairman mr vinod kukunur president mohammad fayaz ceo kavin kukunur for being our platinum sponsors with their continuous support and helping the needy people in india today january 21st 
we have two honorable speakers dr ajit kulkarni coming on our platform for second time with a very interesting topic trapped in life a case presentation followed by chc president dr sheetal tiwari who is coming for the third time at our platform to speak about importance of chc certification so stay tuned until the end of the webinar this session will be for 2 hours and thank you so much dr ajit kulkarni for being part of our spirituality book with your precious inspirational message and let us welcome our first speaker dr ajit kulkarni md homeopathy no introduction is needed as is a well known experienced homeopath from pune india practicing over 35 years he is the director of homeopathic research institute satara and pune a veteran homeopath and academic academician and a famed international teacher he has 80 plus international seminars in different parts of the world and more than 100 seminars in india he is the co-author of absolute homeopathic made in america and five regional repertories to name aids diabetes mellitus thyroid hypertension trauma he is author of several books like law of similars in medical science homeopathic posology kali fam family body language and homeopathy homeopathy through harmony and to totality volume 1 2 and 3 homeopathic covidoscope he has received many awards to name few awards of excellence in homeopathy award of homeo ratna life achievement award dr b sahani memorial award and many more more than 100 publications on aspects of homeopathy he has written many articles and books translated in several languages such as bulgarian turkish ukraine hebrew etc and 26 books in russian language he is member editorial board national journal of homeopathy mumbai and you can reach him at website dr www.ajitkulkarni.com and let us welcome our first speaker dr ajit to our webinar please so you are muted so welcome everyone and on this uh, holy day which has begun in india on the background of the sri ram we have the book on spiritualism by kavita so everything is precious now so my lecture and i am talking about something which is with a conflict which is definitely not precious conflict in life is a very serious issue no? when we are talking about conflict we talk about disagreement clashes our opinions our bigoted convictions of the mind we have our individual perception of the matter the matter under consideration our views our personalities our characters the values the training system which we have since our childhood our objectives our priorities our needs everything is at the level of the conflict so conflict is a very big subject it is not only a subject of individual but of the society we have the big wars going on in the world today because of the conflicts because of the disagreements because of the opposing views which become strong and then we have the war so conflicts affect us emotionally mentally environmentally intellectually and they damage us so we have today a case of a damage and how we are going to now understand this whole 
process of the illness of the whole process where we are able to see how the life unfolds itself under the time and space dimension the life unfolds something happens in the life something happens at the level of the mal adjustment mal adaptation and the homeostasis is affected so i will share my screen in order to present to you please allow me to share the screen <clears throat> Yeah, Kavita, you have to allow me to share the. Yes, uh, Doctor Ajit, can you try now, please? I will try. Yeah, very good. Okay, whether you are able to see what I have been written here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we have this case now. This is the case of a thirty-eight-year-old woman. Everything is in her own words. I usually prefer documentation in the patient's words, and homeopathy is based on human language, which is the strength of homeopathy. she has panic attacks two minor episodes during the day time a severe attack strikes every 4 to 6 weeks during panic lot of symptoms insomnia breathing problems and she says that these recurring attacks of the panic are attributed to prolonged burnout frequent bouts of headaches she has contact dermatitis on the fingers and she says that these skin complaints are worse by the mental stress so patient is aware of the mental stress and its correlation with the physical body this is a very important aspect because many patients don't understand this. her work area she is a secretary in a office unfortunately she says that she is feeling uncertain about the future because her current role doesn't allow her to fully utilize her skills and potential so you are in work area you have the potential and you are not allowed no so you don't blossom no? your creativity is blocked this is a major issue of conflict conflict begins when something happens against your wish you want to do something and it doesn't get executed it doesn't get materialized adding to my frustration i have recently learned that my junior has been promoted you see now if someone is working consensusly sincerely honestly expecting something junior is promoted and i have been assigned the responsibility to train this junior this is traditional work no this situation has left me feeling demotivated frustrated and her request for a salary increase has been declined so see now the situation in the work area she thinks that she has the potential she doesn't see the future there is a frustration and there are frequent attacks of panic i have reached a point where i cannot sustain this situation any longer and i'm actively considering my options for the future so considering the options is one thing no and executing them is another thing whether it is a superficial emotive expression or whether the patient possesses the will to go ahead 
this is very important will is central idea will defines the image will defines the position the image wants to occupy the consideration of the will and the energy with which the will operates in the life these are all matters of concern as far as personality structure and analysis of the personality of a patient are concerned homeopathy doesn't only deal with symptoms behind symptoms there is a man behind symptoms there is a personality which we have to explore thoroughly childhood very happy childhood educated family i was a very sincere student but i am very sensitive and i would get upset very easily i was fortunate to receive a lot of love from my parents this is very important part of the childhood you know in anxiety neurosis in neurotic patients you must explore the childhood upbringing nurturing caring affectionate emotional stability these are the pillars of harmonious life in future alternately she had a good childhood sadly my father passed away 15 years ago my relationship with my mother remains positive husband my relationship with him not very good we don't share much and we are not close friends now the issue is coming up childhood very good marriage husband relationship now work area family area creeping i am married and have two children a daughter 12 years of age and the son 11 years yes a relationship i am drawn to the main with a strong physique and dynamic macho personality are you able to see this is at one level her need at another level it could be a problem how the conflicts get created we have to see my boss embodies this characteristics a dynamic man macho man so my boss is a macho man while my husband tends to be more reserved and slow i prefer individuals who take hope, bold and proactive actions so it is clear that according to her the husband is a slow man passive man indolent man and the boss is a dynamic man expectations and reality i had expectation from my boss including a salary increase a respect and the potential for a long term commitment but at the end it turns out at physical relation only which makes me feel sexually exploited so the relationship with the boss is the physical relationship and she expects much more than only physical relationship this situation has become increasingly challenging and emotionally taxing i am now evaluating this relationship both physically and emotionally in contrast my physical relationship with my husband is unsatisfactory but with my boss it is more fulfilling are you getting now the conflict the conflict which is now you see taxing her it is a big load load to carry the relations no you have been with a heavy load on your back and you are allowed to stand climbing in the life no what happens to you you are exhausted no and you may fall down falling down no up and and when you are up you are likely to fall down then you are on the ground no this is what aram pathogenesis is our gold remedies my boss has not fulfilled his commitment to be exclusively with me and i have lost trust in him 
Why? Because our patient says that she has learned that he's involved with another woman besides his wife, which has made me jealous. So now the situation. She is married, two children. Husband relation is known to you. She is related with this boss. He is also married. But now he is in another relationship. See now the situation and the conflict. And we have to define the will. We have to define how we are treating this patient. What kind of psychological counseling you want to give to this patient. It's a big job. So what is the dilemma? I find myself in a situation where I cannot continue with both men. My husband is likely unaware of my relationship with my boss. I am contemplating divorce from my husband, although it seems challenging. She is thinking. But what about execution? Whether she has opted for something? You see the situation. I am unable to find the happiness in either my marital life or my relationship with my boss. This is the conflict. Conflict of an active type brings on unhappiness. Then you have huge symptomatology. Depression, panic attacks, anxiety. See now the situation. So what are the feelings? Frustration and stagnation. She stagnated. She stagnated in the relationship with the boss. She stagnated in the work area. She wants to overcome the situation, come out of the state. But she lacks something. She lacks basically something which is responsible for not taking the divorce. Not going away from the boss. Opting for an another job. It requires some strength. She can say to you, I am a very potential and skillful lady. Okay, show it. Everything in life has to be shown. Your capacities are being accounted in life. You cannot only speak like a parrot. Your capacities will give you the enough self-image, the position in the life. So, as a homeopath, you have to understand this whole process. I am experiencing a mix of emotions, including anxiety, sadness, and I feel being unappreciated. No salary for the junior training. No commitment on the part of the boss. She expects that the boss should take the divorce and marry with her, which is not happening. She has understood that he is in a relationship with another woman. See the whole situation now. Okay. So I feel trapped, disappointed, isolated. And during interviews, I sometimes find myself on the verge of tears but I managed to control. In the interview, she cried many times, but every cry is a controlled cry. I have already written over cries of the babies and of the adults in my body language book. Cries are of 45 types for the humans. At least we must know some very basic cries. Anger cry. Hunger cry and pain cry. These are the three basic types of the cries. Then uncontrolled cry, controlled cry. Calcinocinum, Ignatia, Cyclamine. You know, Cyclamine has undemonstrative grief. So they control. Amragrisia control. Is it possible for the Solanus family to control the cry? No. They cry so loudly, screaming, shouting. The best example is chamomila and stramonium. So each person, each remedy 
is like a vibrant individual and that has its own presentation, historical cry of cannabis indica. Then you have laughing alternating with weeping of Ignatia. So a lot of literature can be developed in homeopathy based on our understanding. I have lost approximately 8 kilograms in weight. See now, this is very important. The appetite is diminished. When a person has active conflict, it tells upon the physique. However, it could be opposite also. There are many people who develop bulimia. They start eating, eating, eating because of the stress. One of the remedies of conflict, office, work and home is capsicum. Capsicum is obese individual. And with conflict, there is a bulimia. Severe homesickness, but no way out but to be distant from the family and to work for survival. The current headaches, persistent fatigue and the panic attacks. What are my positive characters? I always ask this question. Tell me about your positive characters. Don't ask directly. Tell me about negative characters. This is an attacking question. Just ask positive characters. Make a smile. Write it down. Oh, I, I, I understand. You are a sincere one. I understand. I appreciate it. Say this one. This will give you a good idea how the patient is now with you and is likely to share in a more free manner. Then the question, tell me about your negative characters. I tend to avoid people, struggle to defend myself and often find myself crying alone. Yeah. Are you getting now? So, what are the negative characters? I tend to avoid people, struggle to defend myself. So, self-protest is very necessary in life, no? There is a temperamental inability, incapacity to protest. Isko Hindi mein bidhasta bolte, malate mein bidhasta bolte. Bidhasta means non-protested. You just uh, become submissive and yielding. And the other people go on becoming more strong and they influence you. They become dictatorial. And you just uh, is in the receiving position. While I used to be ambitious in the past, I no longer feel that way. The will is affected. Ambition and will are related. I have begun to doubt my capacities and I have lost my confidence. This is the reason. Lack of confidence is always a result, remember. So don't take this rubric as a shortcut. It's a big rubric of more than 300 remedies. The basic idea is that what led to lack of confidence. These all dispositional characters in the evolution of a personality are to be understood as indivisible unit. Then you will be in a position to understand the personality. Lack of confidence is a result. I lack the courage. I exhibit fragility, indecisiveness, and a tendency to yield. This is her character. This is the basis. On this basis, now you have to understand her behavior. With the husband, with the boss, in the work area, with the other schoolmates, with the society. So she becomes a victim. So the phenomenon of victimization is an issue of the personality. This has to be treated, not just symptoms. You will go on giving arsenic and argentum, I become an aconite. But this is not correct homeopathy. This is a superficial homeopathy. Because 
as far as the whole understanding is concerned, it doesn't cover the totality. Each case of panic attack is a unique case, different case. And the problems are dependent upon the basic disposition characters of an individual, which define the unique personality. Incidentally, I will tell you a very interesting case of cannabis indica, which is under the rubric panic attacks for three months. The panic attacks were based on the theme that I will not be able to now go for a life which is with luxury, with entertainment, with amusement, with recreation, with drug abuse. So how I can enjoy the life? And that was the very basis of cannabis indica. With few doses of one M, the patient improved significantly. Why? Because the issue in this case was a different one. So I hit upon the real target of the personality. This is what we call as a soul and essence and kernel and heart and the nucleus of the sickness and of the remedy. Okay, consolation has a little effect on me. In fact, it often ends up causing more of physical data. Sleep is good, dreams not frequent. Sometimes there are dreams of uh, flights crashing, work related, big ocean is there. Desires, you see, Cheese desire is for four months, aversion to meat. The patient hails from Europe. So meat desire in Europe is we can understand aversion to meat is certainly a matter of concern and we must give value to it. Smoking since 2013, but I have stopped since chemotherapy. And this is very important. She had Hodgkin's lymphoma. Fortunately, no non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is more dangerous than Hodgkin's lymphoma. But she went into remission quickly with six chemotherapeutic sessions. The last chemotherapy she took was in 2014. Now, my question is, how you can now integrate this cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, with the mental state today. See, the same individual suffered from lymphoma, the same individual now suffering from panic attacks. The same individual landed into trouble because of her weak characters of the personality. The vulnerability, the victimization, the phenomenon. I'm now talking at the level of the physical body and also at the mind level. And in this process of the life journey of evolution, you are able to see the expressions at the mind level, expressions at the physical level. These are just expressions. One indivisible unit of a personality manifesting different expressions. Personality is the same. Biological entity is the same. The organismic collectivity is also the same. Therefore, the concept of totality of Hanuman has to be understood at the basic level of the person. We will use the symptoms, we will use the manifestations very well, intelligently to process the data. But as Hanuman said, manifestations are expressions of the internal melody. So internal melody is the personality itself. The cause is personality, the effect is personality. Chili, then uh, you will find mother had uh, pyelonephritis, kidney stones, myocardial infarction. Now this is the repertorialization. Okay. Delusions, imagination, abuse being. She has this strong field of being sexually exploited. Now, you have to understand the situation. Whether she has stopped the relation with this man, no. Physical relationships are continued. 
So what is this exploitation? If this man divorces his wife and marries with this girl, then this feeling of being exploited will disappear. So see, when the things do not happen, the opinions get developed and they become fixed. The fixed ideas is an aftermath of what is happening in the mind, out of conflict, out of our convictions, out of our priorities, when they are not met with. Then delusion, betrayed being. This is a very strong feeling which she has. I have been betrayed by a person. I cannot trust him. Delusion, trap, he. This is a very important uh, rubric. This is a basic rubric for the conflicting situations in the life. But this is a big rubric containing more than 50 remedies. And each remedy will give you its own way of thinking process. It's logical, analogical, personality understanding of the, in the behavioral responses. Just like delusion of being persecuted is a basic delusion of schizophrenic patients. Whenever you see trap situations in the life, and these trap situations can come through conflicts at many levels in the life. It could be family and work area, which is fairly common. Dependency, independency. This girlfriend and that girlfriend. This boyfriend and that girl boyfriend. This salary, that salary. This uh, job, that job. I wanted to become a homeopathic doctor, but I couldn't become. Why? Because I didn't succeed succeed in the marks. So my why my life is totally ruined. Is it true? No, it is not true. You develop it. In this way, delusions get developed. Delusions are also dispositional characters which get glued to your personality like a heavy call. Dreams, persecution of fear, panic attacks, indecision, irresolution, which is a major aspect. And she is indecisive in childhood. Something which is consistent with the personality is very important. Because in variable situations in the journey of the life, when the patient expresses the same consistent characters of the personality, they are very important in evaluation of the mental symptoms. Love, disappointment, unhappy elements from. See, this is a rubric not only related to the romantic love. Any relationship where there is a disappointment, this could become a big rubric, basic rubric. It contains around 100 remedies and not only natural, muraticum and ignatia. Reproaches oneself. This has increased in the last six months. She is blaming herself now. I am responsible for my condition out of depression. You know, one of the symptoms of depression is the feeling of guilt. In my volume number one of the Harmony book, I have written extensively over guilt, shame and concerns. And I have also given a lot of new rubrics. You know, I came out with a new rubric, Existential Guilt. People who are guilty now do not want to live and end their life through suicide. There is a very severe self-blame and loathing of life. Then there is a rubric existential shame or guilt. We have to develop in this way a lot of new rubrics in the repertory, mental as well as physical. And there is a big scope for this. Yielding disposition, which is her basic character, and then cheese desire, which is her four marks. And you have 
दिवशी पल्से त्याला इग्नेशा नेठ्रमोन नग स्वामी का स्टाफे सगळ्या कारसन ओसेन रहसजी फाल्कॉन देन हॅफिन हायोसायमस फास्परस बराटा काब प्लॅसेंटा प्लॅसेंटा इज अ व्हेरी इंटरेस्टिंग रेमेडी आय हॅव ट्रीटेड थ्री फोर केसेस ऑफ प्लॅसेंटा and i have also presented one very interesting case of placenta the theme with placenta is very clear to you it's a transitory temporary organ but very important which provides the nutrition to the fetus it develops even before the fetus but it has no value once the prince or princess is born so what is your value you are toxic we use you now we will throw you outside so the people who have been exploited in their life and then thrown out and they have very severe feeling of being abandoned like magnesia are you able to see the doctor in a signature of the placenta now here it is very important that no one is abandoning her So the problem is not of abandonment to discuss about placenta boss is enjoying the relationship with her she is also enjoying the relationship her husband doesn't say to her that go away she doesn't say anyone to go away so there is no issue of abandonment it is her feeling that she has not been appreciated and everything is coming at the level of her self image she desperately trying to see her self image of a sufficient space where is her space her space has been constrained her space has been restrained her space has been narrowed down to something because of her fragility which we have to take So analysis she is strongly influenced by the instinctual drives and appears to be trapped in the cycle of money evolution why i say you because the instinct now this instinct here in this case at the level of two first is the sexual instinct she cannot enjoy the sex in the way she wants because husband is not a match so she searches for a match of character of a man and she receive it so her instinct got materialized she had a wish of a macho man in childhood she was attracted to the macho man so the relationship got developed here we see her impressionable character there are three issues of the human character as far as this getting influenced is concerned first is impressionable children are more impressionable yielding people submissive people who say yes to everything that impression ever second one is credulous the conium is a very good example of this falsetella is a very good example and then the third one is superstitious where you define that you believe on something supernatural god is talking with me god gave me the order god told me go in this direction at 2 o'clock at night what is this as if someone is governing them so we must understand all these issues very well and whether we are able to take good rubrics so this all case teaches us what is the nucleus of the case and what is in the periphery we can go from periphery to the nucleus we can go from the nucleus to the periphery but for us what we need is a totally on the surface she presents such ambitious and assertive but it is essential to focus on her underlying vulnerabilities illness especially neurosis anxiety hypochondriasis panic attacks do not develop unless one is hypersensitive unless one is vulnerable unless one is fragile unless one is brittle 
managing two significant relationship in her life has proven challenging her relationship with her boss has taken a toxic turn while her relationship with her husband is unsatisfactory this is a conflict toxic relation is again a very deep consideration in homeopathy and we need to develop a rubric relation toxic in psychology toxic relation has been studied very deeply and you know toxic relation really causes damage to everything anacardium acid nitricum lachesis even lycopodium varietyum album staphylococcus also they develop toxic relations overwhelming emotions seem to be paralyzing her today she is totally driven by her emotions instincts are emotions instincts are her priorities they are all taking a toll on her overcoming them with a balance seems to be difficult therefore our patient has reached a critical emotional threshold a boiling point leading to feelings of hopelessness despair sadness anger frustration fear panic anxiety lack of confidence and self reproach these are all consequences her condition doesn't appear to be related to cognitive immobility this is a concept in psychology in cognitive uh, uh, you see immobility you are with a brooding nature you become cognitively immobile a thought or something like a resentment something like a injustice feeling this is so deeply rooted in the mind that you cannot overcome it and you start ruminating over it there is a very good rubric for this that is brooding any person who has a brooding has to be understood at the level of the cognitive immobility this is a concept in psychology thoroughly studied and presented by the psychologist but in homeopathy we have not yet incorporated so i develop a rubric cognitive immobility with explanation in my fourth coming book on repertory it is in this way we have to integrate several concepts this is the reason why i develop the whole theme of body language with homeopathy and offer 800 pages book to the profession because through this only we can make homeopathy holistic okay childhood being stress free and there are no apparent unresolved past issues therefore she didn't go into the brooding habit no otherwise you know very well father was alcoholic mother took the divorce when the patient was 10 years of age and then mother only sees her once every year she has been nurtured only in the boarding school then the brooding becomes this is my life i am unfortunate why for me why god is cursing me common expressions no? her current state of feeling trap is self generated and part of an ongoing process this is very important ongoing process whether a person is able to stop it at what age if this ongoing process continues in the same way her mind will be more and more disturbed and she will come out with maybe chronic psychopathology she displays fragility and sensitivity often feeling neglected and exploited this fragility is evident in her indecisiveness and consistent tendency to yield allowing herself to be victimized her delusions and dreams provide insight into her deeper emotional state flights 
then some kind of a war because her mind is at war. Now I am, you see, treating a host of patients from Israel. And uh, our group in Israel is working and I have big six presentations of each three hours on war related issues of the personalities of the individuals who have gone through an experience of the war. So I will begin from next month, almost every week, every 15 days, three hours deliberation, big subject. Okay, summary. This individual is facing significant challenges, both in her personal and professional life. Dissatisfaction in her career, complex and emotionally taxing extramarital relationship, and the desire for the change. If there is no desire for the change, you see, there is no conflict. Are you with me? Conflicts get created because there are clashes between the opposing ideas. When your will is performed very well, fulfilled very well, no problem. She is experiencing a range of negative emotions and physical effects. And then these characters are shifting towards self-doubt and fragility. Mathematic assessment. The patient's tendency to return overwhelming emotions and feelings of entrapment suggests a psychotic miasm. Because you know in psychotic miasm, there is a retention of the emotions. It is not a big erratic pattern of the tubercular miasm. It is not a big psychopathology of something like split personality, psychosis and schizophrenia or manic depressive psychosis or schizoaffective disorder of syphilitic nature. It is a half repeated phenomenon where she is victimized. She feels the entrapment but couldn't overcome the situation over months and years. However, the past history of Hodgkin's lymphoma indicates a tubercular miasm. Now, the psychotic miasm we understood, but the panic attacks where she becomes restless, she becomes extremely anxious. She develops very severe kind of the headache. Her quality of life is affected. These panic attacks suggest you tubercular miasm. Because in tubercular miasm, you get suddenness, you get erratic characters, you get oscillations of the mind, you get a kind of a, you see, tuberculinic character. So there is no space for you. You desperately try to get a space. The best example is tuberculinum bovinum kent. When you call a person, desire to travel, but he doesn't know where to travel. What is the destination of the travel, which calcinosin knows very well. Calcinosinum has also the desire for travel, but he knows very well. Phosphorus knows very well. It has also desire for travel. I travel for art and beauty. Calcinosin wants to explore like sulfur, something fundamental, something beautiful. He wants to explore the nature. He wants to explore the people. So there is some wiseness, some reasoning. Tuberculinum has no reasoning because it represents the tubercular miasma of erraticity. This Hodgkin's lymphoma was one expression in the past of syphilitic miasma. It doesn't mean that patient now is in the syphilitic miasma. Many times there is a visiting of one miasmatic layer and disappears. The patient can come to his original state with a little bit intermittent expressions of some other miasm. So miasm study has to be understood through energy pattern and exhibition of the energy. Okay, 
then if unaided by the similar healing force, that is love similar, an aberrant immune response can be expected. So now she has the tubercular myelomatic expressions, which may become more deep. Then this myelom needs to be treated. So according to the repertorization, according to what we are analyzing the case, there are a host of remedies that are coming up. So we will make a now study of this uh, differential diagnosis. Falcon, you know very well it is a bird. The central theme is associated with a profound sense of isolation. You know, isolation is also one of the aspects of bird remedies. In my second volume of this uh, book, Harmony in Totality, I have given almost 40 pages on bird remedies. The general indications of them, in addition to freedom, are also isolation. Do you know, like the humans, Birds also behave by isolating someone. You cannot be a part of our group. Usually like elephants, the birds are gregarious. They are always in company. But in order to punish someone, they may give abandonment to someone. Then they feel lonely. They feel isolated. Falcon P often means neglected and rejected by the friends, family and society. It may be actual desertation, desertion by the biological parents, similar to the magnesium. This aspect of being deserted has not been adequately paid attention to as far as the bird remedies are concerned. The emotional triggers for falcon include experiences of humiliation, domination, shame, physical and sexual abuse, as well as emotional abuse actual abuse. Now our patient herself has entered into the relationship. Now she feels that she has been exploited and being abused. But as I told you, this is not an abuse like you see in carcinosis. It is not the abuse you feel in Ignatia, for example. So Falcon may harbor a negative self-image, feeling this self-disgust and perceiving his body as ugly akin to the lag group. So many cases of acne vulgaris in you see girls where she start feeling themselves very ugly. Think of Falcon in addition to the lag group. And in lag group, what you see is inferiority complex. I am low, small, and there is a big, great, deep self-depreciation in lag group. Common emotional traits include indifference, apathy, laziness, discontent, which can be compared to phosphoric acidum and sick. There is a recurring theme or dream related to speed, free fall, and the acceleration of being the fastest. A sensation of being stuck as if trapped in a cage is akin to the effects of LSD. Do you know this remedy, LSD? In LSD, the feeling of being caged. And a very interesting case of Europe, and this lady was uh, uh, studying some homeopathic course over there, and she developed tinea carporis. Her buttock, her all the uh, frontal, uh, uh, you see, vagina and all other areas, and also back areas where with a large tinea carpores. She was scratching, 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 and so much exhausted with the disease. She took a lot of fungal infection courses. Then I found in her a conflict. The conflict of between sexuality and her husband. And this sexuality was related to homosexuality. I work out the case. And in one of my studies, I found LSD indicated. And believe me, with few doses of the LSD, the carpoli started fading away. 
this patient still express a sort of gratitude to, to homeopathy and to Dr. Agit Kripke. So this is a wonderful remedy in homeopathy LSD. Okay. Then we rule out falcon in this case at the total it is inadequately covered the case is not of sexual abuse or decreased libido her libido is normal she wants to continue the relationship provided the boss becomes her exclusive partner and fulfills her wishes pulsatilla pulsatilla's primary appetite is for companionship i want the company so company is like an oxygen and then you will find pulsatilla encompasses the concept of polygamous relationships and can find happiness within such relationships. The issue here is the different plane and pulsatilla doesn't cover the totality. You know pulsatilla silica fluoricum acidum is a trio. In one of my uh, uh, chapters in the volume second, I have 20 pages write up on this trio. See the polygamous relationships which you encounter in Pulsitilla. You also see in Fluoricum acid. Although the level is different. The level of acid is different. The level of a plant kingdom is different. Okay. Ignatia, it presents a complex emotional state characterized by melancholy and despondency. It often includes intense pessimism and tendency toward hysterical reactions. Individuals requiring Ignatia may display contradictory and alternating states of the mind. But Ignatia, in this case, doesn't cover the evolution of the personality. Then comes our very important remedy in the term which always comes up in clinical practice. So it is abuse and overuse. Natural mood presence with cognitive mobility and the hurt person spends her life ruminating over the past. The issue is natural mood is one person involved in the relationship. Now she is in the two persons. It is as if the whole life is centered around the person upon whom the investment is literally poor. The disappointment in love is a deep issue with natural muraticum and the hurt feeling remains in the deep recess of the mind. Natural mood upon presence, you see the cognitive immobility where the mind is stuck in the painful memories of the past. Okay, then comes our placenta. I already talked about placenta. <clears throat> so there are two key themes with the placenta. It's temporary utility during pregnancy and the necessity of removing it for the sake of mother's health. Okay. Here, we selected a remedy, Salix Fragilis. And a single dose we gave once every week for one month. So she took four doses. Now let us study what is Salix Fragilis. This is also called as a cracked willow. See the beautiful plant you would like to look at, no? distinguish. You see now the beauty. And you see now the leaf. How beautiful the leaf is. Okay. It comes from the Europe and Western Asia. Then it has been used for rheumatism, fever, analgesia. Then uh, you will find this action is uh, uh, due to the aspirin content of pain. The term fragilis is indicative of how the twigs of this willow species break off easily and cleanly at their base. Are you able to see the fragility? This is the fragility. So they are broken very easily. They lack the strength. They lack the will. They have irresoluteness. They cannot execute their will. And they become sick. Broken down. Exactly what we see today of this patient. She is broken down. 
She has lost her confidence of her life. She doesn't understand what is exactly happening with her life and what is her role now. There is a confusion to the role. Conflicts often develop the role problem. Identification of a role in the life is a very important aspect of data processing in homeopathy. So what are the core symptoms of uh, this salix fragilis? Lack of self-confidence, desire for change during critical situations. This is coming from the proving. This proving of this remedy is available on the internet. I'm giving you the core issues of the personality. The proving is a very large one and has been done very, very deeply. So I really thank the uh, provers who do the job and this is a very big remedy and it is likely to be a very important remedy in the modern civilized life. Okay, so what you see is the desire for change. Everything for her is critical, no? Job is critical, boss is critical, husband is critical. Cracking symptoms, manifestations of cracking or fissures on the skin, orifices and lips. And in her contact dermatitis, there are cracks. And there are cracks in the interpersonal relationships. Sensation of disconnection. A profound feeling of separation, which may encompass feeling disconnected from the world, one's own identity, friends, family or groups. This sense of separation may also extend to experiencing parts of the body as if they are disconnected. It is here that you have to compare this very important remedy with Sabadilla, with Hydrogeninum, with Germanium. In Germanium, you get the concept of oneness, what you see in Carcinosinum. Disconnected from the earth, and I am in the space alone, separated. Germanium. I treated a very interesting case of a European lady who sustained after 17 years the disappointment of her romantic hormonal love. Then after 12 years, she came to me suffering from this sensation. I am away from the earth and I cannot come back from the sky onto the ground. Core themes, division and conflict. Self-doubt and insecurity, emotions of abandonment, conscience-related anxiety, as if I have done something wrong. Proving phrases, a lot of proving. I have uh, an appeal to every one of you to read this case, to read Salix Fragilis. And I'm going to give you my presentation free although it is a part of the Harmony book, second value, please read this case thoroughly in order to understand the data, the processing of the data, the remedy, and how the homeopathic remedy heals a patient from within. So elements from anticipation, sorrow, unrequited love, death of belief, death of a child, ignition, multiplication, business. And this is a very good comment by Penel of Sterling. So you will find uh, this is a very important uh, aspect he focuses upon fragility. So comparative material America, we have a lot of comparison with Ignatia, Staphysagara, Naxomica. In chronic cases, you can compare sepia, phosphorus, pulsatella, Ignatia, phosphoric acidum also. So a lot of comparisons I have already given here. I do not want to just tell you all this. Now the first flaw in the patient's words. After the remedy, she experienced unexplained crying episodes, but subsequently felt relieved and much better. This is catharsis. In many individuals, you begin homeopathy and there is a more crying. This is a healing because catharsis has occurred. Over the past month, the frequency of crying episodes has decreased significantly. She can now engage in conversation without crying. Throughout this second interview of the follow-up, she spoke calmly, remained tear-free, 
and display positive mood. On one occasion, she had a depressive episode in the left afternoon around 2 p.m. There have been no panic attacks anymore, whereas they used to occur almost daily. She describes her throat as feeling heavy like a lump, which often leads to crying. This is a very typical neurotic, hysterical feeling, well described in hysterical remedies such as Pothos, Raphanus, Asaporita, or Ignatia. She is now able to work with concentration, perform her job adequately, and take on responsibilities. Previously, she struggled with concentration and tended to fixate on one point. Her demeanor is now calm, and she believes there is still more work to be done. She is not yet entirely independent and aims for complete comfort. Provided she executes her will, it is possible. Now she is feeling better, but this is not enough. She used to feel weak and drained, but now she has begun to gain weight. So she gained almost 2 kg weight. Her appetite has improved, surpassing her pre-remedy levels. She has also started reading books due to improve concentration. Overall, she notes a positive trend. Her sleep has improved and she reports having pleasant dreams. So this dream of the flight and aeroplane and war, it has gone. Numbness in her limbs, which used to occur in the evenings, has become less frequent. The last episode of the numbness occurred 10 days ago. She no longer experiences suicidal thoughts. Dark circles under the eyes are diminished. Her complexion appears fresher and brighter. She attended a job interview but prefers not to reveal the details until she secures the position. Means until she receives the job. So she told me I am trying and I will let you know. Okay. She now engages in social structure. Then uh, second follow continued with the uh, salix fragilis. The patient progress is notable. She now reports feeling relaxed and no longer constantly dwells on conflicts. She recently took a trip to Egypt with her husband and children, thoroughly enjoying the excursion. This occurred after a long duration, almost four or five years after. She has gained confidence in maintaining some distance from her boss, resulting in a reduced emotional burden. Furthermore, her job search continues and there is a high likelihood that she will secure the job. Now, this case was being, uh, uh, you see, taken a long back. Now, the situation is that she left this job. She left totally the relationship with this boss. She is with the husband her children and her new job is very promising and she is enjoying it. So what is the lesson from this case? Salix fragilis is a well proved remedy but it is often underutilized in homeopathic clinical practice. It deserves an application in disappointed love relationships where there is a fragility and cracking play a central role in emotional entrapment. It is essential to recognize that focusing solely on the tip of the iceberg represents a limited approach in homeopathy. Because then we will address only the surface problems. Totality encompasses both the visible aspects and the underlying factors that contribute to the patient's condition. In the context of homeopathy, totality comprises not only the immediate symptoms, but also the broader framework, including the root causes and their ripple effects throughout the patient's life. Therefore, the need of evolutionary totality. How the interpersonal relationships get created and how they affect a person. Understanding this holistic perspective is very crucial for the effective homeopathic management. The base and the surrounding the base and the edifice, the nucleus and the periphery, the cause and the effects are the inseparable constituents of totality. So with these words, I take your leave. I am really open now to your questions. And I thank the organizers for calling me 
and allow me to present my views. Yeah, any question from our group? Are you understanding the case? Do you understand the data processing? Why we came to Salix fragilities? There is something fundamental at the base of fragility, which is represented by the plant. You see the evolution, you see the state of the mind and how the entrapment occurs in the life. A real homeopathic remedy gives a healing touch at the deep level of personality. Then the healing begins. There's one question, sir, from uh, Dr. Muhammad Muzamil. Uh, does these, these cases need any nosode prescription? Uh, a nosode is required when the indicated remedies fail. The basic theme with the intercurrent prescription in homeopathy. Uh, of course, intercurrent prescribing is not only related to nosodes. It could be related to sarcodes also. It could be related to organopathic remedies also. You see, the concept of intercurrent came because we are right. We are giving the prescription on the basis of the law of stimulus, but there is some block which we have to remove. In this case, there is a definitely a big role of you see carcinocinum in this case. But Salix has done a very good job. When I will find that Salix is no further working, in spite of going to the high potency, I will definitely think of interpolating a dose of carcinocinum one end in view of Hodgkin's lymphoma in the past and an issue of the conflict. In carcinocinum, you have the same theme of phenomenon of the victimization. Yeah, any we other have questions? Some more questions from the viewers? Please write it down in the chat box. Yeah. I will open the chat box for Sir, Dr. Manjusha is uh, writing that please explain cantharis more. Cantharis? Okay. Yeah. Now the cantharis planish fly. You have to understand first that when you discuss any venom, it has got an element of viciousness. In the event which is venomous. Something is malicious. Something is vindictive. They are reactionary. For a survival, they have to be reactionary. So an individual who possesses a venom is usually reacting overtly. There is an overt emotional response because they think that I am in danger. I have to survive. I have to show you how aggressive I am. What kind of the potential I possess. And I will try to give you a retaliatory response. This you see in Cantharis also. Cantharis has very basically three characters. First, sexuality, which is very, very developed in Cantharis, like Mercury, like Staphysagria, and like many other lascivious remedies. Second thing, is the inflammatory nature of the mind and also of the body. You know, cancer is, is a remedy of inflammation, all kinds of inflammation, not only cystitis, not only glomerulonephritis, it is also indicated for encephalitis, for enteritis, for diphtheria, for acute throat tonsillitis. A good pemphigus on the skin, which is very deep seated abdominal disorder. So the theme is of inflammation. You know, cancer is a very angry individual. So this is two aspects of this. The third aspect is that this all anger and aggression and suppressed anger more goes into the bladder. 
you see the language the human human symbolic language of the bladder is very interesting bladder is for retention of something unwanted so i have to first collect something and then i have to waste it out so the retention of something negative keeping it within and then reacting this is cantharis second thing the bladder language is fear of being leakage and then i will be embarrassed so our rectum and our bladder has this very important language i will be embarrassed what will happen to me people will laugh at me provided there is involuntary urination and defecation and cantharis is a remedy openly he wants to do some sexual act and at the same time if it is not possible there is a big separation he has to hide his sexual instinct then it goes deeper many women who have suppressed sexual desire land into cystitis like prostatitis in male i have a big presentation on prostate for almost more than 20 pages you know what is the meaning of the word prostate horrible this is very interesting the literature meaning of the word prostate and the name of my article is prostating prostate now in prostate one has to forward what one has to forward one has to forward the sexual instinct and it requires something to penetrate and you know very well how prostatic fluid plays a very vital role in sexual activity in semen production of the semen these all issues are very important you know cystitis in a woman has much to do with sexuality much to do with the very complex organs being constructed in a very very near way and just incidentally i will give you an advice which you must be knowing that washing after defecation from behind to front is very wrong most of the cases of cystitis are characterized by e coli infection and e coli are very frequently common in the stool so you must wash from front to the back this simple advice reduces the recurrence of cystitis so remember so this is all about cantharis okay in uh, other words please uh, explain um, about catharsis yeah catharsis has been very deeply studied in psychology catharsis is venting out the whole process is that you have been collecting harboring some negativity and there is an extreme need to release them so releasing them gives you a relief the tension is free this catharsis is a very important process for the sake of healing you know if there is a real grief after bereavement someone died was very attached and close and the person didn't cry the grief is undemonstrated the grief is suppressed then you must allow the patient to mourn it is written in the psychology that you must try so that the patient will cry a real remedy you give even indicated remedy like you will find ignisia like caliburum like acid phosphoricum like natremur there will be catharsis as expressed through body language as expressed through crying as expressed through talking so catharsis is a very important parameter in the follow up of a case yeah thank you so much sir and that's all about the questions over to you dr kavita thank you so much dr sweta for taking questions and dr ajit it's a wonderful presentation <laughs> and i had never got chance to give this salix fragilis so um, we'll consider definitely and uh, thank you so much for refreshing our minds with the underutilized or rare remedies 
and also uh, providing us extensive knowledge with the differential diagnosis of several remedies. Today's session is really uh, very precious and we will have you again at our webinar with more information. Okay, thank you for uh, calling me and giving this platform and to share with you. And in future, we will work together and try to see how we can be of use to the people. Thank you, thank you. And we would like to take privilege to honor your gracious presence and for your precious time in sharing your knowledge and wisdom at our study group with our CAS certificate. Please kindly accept from our team. Okay, yes. Okay, nice, accepted. Congratulations, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rajit. Okay, and thank you. All best wishes to everyone. <laughs> and as Dr. Rajit said, um, we will share his presentation. Whoever is interested, please send email to Group at gmail and Dr. Shravana will be addressing them and she will share the, uh, this today's presentation. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. And we will have our second speaker just in two minutes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kavita. Uh, a heartful thanks to our speakers, our viewers and followers to join us today. And uh, as you said, we have uh, many more informative webinars which are lined up uh, in the upcoming sessions with many more renowned homeopaths. And uh, for the upcoming webinar info or any other updates, follow our social media handles at uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. If you missed any of the webinar, you can watch it out at our YouTube channel with the name Kavita Kukunur. I am thankful uh, to all the supporters and volunteers. And for any other info, reach us at caststudygroup at gmail.com. And don't forget to fill the JOT form to receive your participation certificate. Thank you. Thank you all. And the JOT form needs to be filled within one to two days. And we will, you'll receive the certificate in seven to 10 days. And before we end, thank you so much for this beautifully compiled by Dr. Sweta Singh and narrated by uh, Dr. Sweta Varma. And again, a lot of more information is shared in the book. And as Dr. Sheetal is there two years back and now today, again at our anniversary. So wishing everyone the best. And once again, I thank Ka Homeopathy Steady Group and their team for the continuous selfless support uh, for the, all these car activities and webinars. And today we have our car volunteers, Dr. Shravana and Dr. Mahmud, Dr. Richa, Dr. Poonam, Dr. Deepa, and many more car volunteers. Thank you all once again. And uh, Dr. Sheetal and Dr. Ajit, shall we end the webinar? Yeah. All right. See yeah. you all again. Yeah. at next webinar. Thank you all. And um, until then, stay healthy and happy. And uh, Dr. Sweta, would you like to end the webinar? Sure. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.